It's one o'clock at KSL News Radio. I'm Britt Johnson. KSL's top story this hour Provo Airport is adding a heavy hitter to their airline providers. American Airlines will be offering daily service out of Utah County. KSL News Radio's Eric Cabrera has the story. With airplanes taxiing in the background, Provo's Mayor Michelle Cafusi made it official. We proudly welcome American Airlines with year round daily service to Dallas Fort Worth and Phoenix. This collaboration is big for Provo Airport, who just hit their millionth traveler, a number SLC Airport in contrast sees in about two weeks. Mayor Kafusi sees this as another sign of major growth for Provo and the state as a whole. I always tell my team we think 30 years out because we didn't want to think of the growth. We want to get ahead of it. You'll be able to fly to Dallas, Fort Worth and Phoenix from Provo starting October 7th. Reporting from Provo Airport, Eric Cabrera, KSL News Radio. Southern Utah University received a threatening phone call this morning. The campus went on lockdown while the grounds were searched. Police confirmed there were no shots fired, but they are taking the threat very seriously, and they are asking people on campus to stay inside until their building is cleared. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. Members of Congress gathered in the House chamber today to hear from the Prime Minister of Japan. ABC's News National Correspondent Stephen Portnoy reports from the Capitol. Addressing America's top lawmakers, the Japanese Prime Minister spoke of threats to Japan posed by China and North Korea. Fumio Kishida said it's why his country stands in support of Ukraine, and he warned that without continued backing from the U.S., Ukraine would quickly fall to Russia. The leadership of the United States it is indispensable. Stephen Portnoy, ABC News at the Capitol. Your money at this moment. The Dow is up 97 points. The S&P has gained 44 points. And the Nasdaq is up 253 points. Coming up, things are looking really nice. KSL Weather is next. KSL News Time 102. You know what's great about KSL's traffic coverage? Trained traffic reporters and real listeners. Trading information and making the commute safer and faster for everyone. Every 10 minutes on the nines, we have you covered on KSL News Radio. Devotion to country, service to Utah. Brent Oren Hatch had a front row seat, watching his father serve our state faithfully in the Senate. A constitutional conservative and lifelong Republican, Brent Oren Hatch is a champion for the rule of law. He's running for Senate to stop this lawless president from destroying our country from within. Hatch will fight to secure the border once and for all and take on Mexican drug cartels to halt the flow of deadly fentanyl. Brent Oren Hatch knows the national debt is just as big a threat to national security. Hatch won't rest until the budget's balanced and won't cave to the big spenders in both parties. Pro-life, deeply committed to religious liberty, rock-solid Utah conservative. Brent Oren Hatch for Senate. Paid for by Conservative Outsider PAC, which is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. www.copac.us When the weather warms up, it's like a stampede. Except instead of dust stirred up by hundreds of hooves, it's a cascade of phone calls to advanced window products. This is Jeff Kaplan. Soon as the sun shines and the snow's gone, people want new windows and frames from Utah's number one custom window maker, and the wait for installation grows longer. But right now, you can get near the front of the line by calling for a quote and get $2,500 off when you purchase 10 windows or more. That's on top of the incredible savings for the highest quality double-pane windows and frames, any style, any color, See, at Advanced Window Products, they actually build the windows here in Utah, they install the windows, and they guarantee them for life. There's no middleman, and they can pass the savings on to you. They even offer buy now, pay later. So get in before the wait grows longer and get the $2,500 off. Get your new windows this spring. Make the call. Advanced Window Products, 801-850-9100. That's 801-850-9100. Or visit advancedwindowsusa.com. This heat's nice, but the real heat? It's coming. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and now is a great time to schedule a preseason AC tune-up. And I'm about to save you some money. Normally, we charge $129 to tune up your air conditioner. But if you call today, Thursday, April 11th, and mention you heard this ad, we'll give you $100 off and tune up your air conditioner for only $29. Call Any Hour Services today and schedule. 801-443-7400. Manufacturers recommend annual maintenance to save on utility bills, identify breakdowns before they happen, and to help your air conditioner last for as many years as possible. 
801-443-7400. If it's more convenient, go to anyhourservices.com and look for the red button that says Book Online. Schedule your $29 tune-up there. That's $129 value for only $29 if you get a hold of us today. Call Any Hour Services right now at 801-443-7400. Google Any Hour Services or schedule online at anyhourservices.com. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Meese. Cleanup continues of the crash on southbound I-15 near Lehigh Main Street's exit and before Pioneer Crossing. It's in that blind curve over to the left shoulder, but backups are reaching 2100 North Lehigh. Lagoon is looking for ride maintenance technicians. Lagoon offers excellent mechanical training programs with amazing career opportunities. Ride maintenance technician position is full-time and year-round. Details, visit lagoonpark.com forward slash jobs. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL weather today and the next couple of days will be really pleasant. A high of 72 today, getting to 78 tomorrow, and we'll have sunny skies with a few clouds here and there. Right now it's 66 degrees and sunny. I'm Britt Johnson from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Inside Sources. Inside Inside Sources. America's Voice of Reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Well, in America, we always say we don't want a king, we don't want a dictator. Those are always the headlines. We're free. We fought a war over that against England 250 years ago. But the question beyond the headline and the thing we need to think again about is while we say we don't want a dictator, Are we actually creating one? Let's begin. Think you know the news of the day? Think again with Boyd Matheson on KSL News Radio. Yes, democracy is messy. It feels slow and cumbersome, and often it fails to live up to the principles we profess to believe. Uh, In American democracy today, uh, far too much time is being spent on pounding on opponents or political parties, and it is actually doing the work of the people. And so how do we change that, and how do we do that without actually giving ourselves a king? Uh, If you don't read anything else today, this is the Read of Reads today. It's by our good friend J.D. Tuchilli. Uh, He is the contributing editor at Reason, and uh, the piece is actually titled, Americans Don't Want a Dictatorship, But They're Creating One Anyway. J.D., welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. (laughs) Always great to have you. And uh, I knew this was going to be where we wanted to start the moment I saw your headline today. And then the more I read, the more I thought, oh, this is so on the money. Uh, And so let's uh, let's start with the premise of this. We always say we're a free country. We don't want no stinking king. We don't want a dictator here. Uh, It seems like we are actually creating one. Describe that for us. Yeah, we're kind of inching in that direction, and it's actually more than inching. It's kind of creeping pretty fast. And a big part of the problem is Americans are kind of ambivalent about the idea of restrained government and a restrained presidency. Um, I was riffing off of a recent poll by AP NORC, uh, Center for Public Affairs Research, out of the University of Chicago, and they headlined it about, you know, half of Americans uh, think it would be bad if the next president is able to act on important policy issues without the approval of Congress or the courts. And only about uh, 21% think it would be a good thing. And I mean, it is good that more Americans think that would be bad than think it would be good. But this is a 250-year-old republic, and really we can only get 48 percent of respondents to say that turning the presidency into an absolute monarchy would be bad. Um, I mean, I just find that a little surprising. Yeah, but we, the we, thing is – yeah, go ahead. I'll keep going. <laughs> well, I was going to say it, it's actually supported by other polling. There was mm. a poll – by University of Virginia Center for Politics in 2021, which found that a similar 20 percent of both Trump and Biden voters strongly agree it would be better if a president could take needed actions without being constrained by Congress or courts. And the previous year, the Democracy Fund Voter Study Group found that over three annual surveys, about 24 percent of Americans say that a strong leader who doesn't have to bother with Congress elections is a good way to govern a country. Now, that's only a, you know, a fifth to a quarter of the population, but really consistently only about half think a dictatorship is a bad thing. 
Wow. Uh, and that's uh, that's what worries me, uh, because it's it sort of become in our politics. Uh, I used to always describe it as the Dennis Rodman syndrome, like everybody hated Dennis Rodman when he was a basketball player. He was dirty. He was cheap. He was wild. He was out of control. And nobody hated him more than the Chicago Bulls right up to the point. He became their Dennis Rodman. <laughs> and, and even though he was still awful, horrible, terrible on all of those fronts, he got him, you know, 21 rebounds, several steals, and wreaked havoc on the other team's uh, best player. Uh, and so now it's sort of become the same thing in our politics of, well, if if my team's got the power, if my team has the White House, then yes, I definitely want a presidency who can not have to wait on Congress to actually get things done. Oh, that's absolutely true. I mean, and, and the the pollsters ask people, OK, if you're a Democrat and Biden wins in November, what do you say now about an unrestrained presidency? And the numbers in favor of it doubled. Um, they asked Republicans the same thing, and the numbers almost tripled. Um, and the fact is, people are much less opposed to the idea of dictatorship if they think it's their dictator. And when they ask you know, more deeply, OK, are you, which branch of government do you think has too much power? It's always a branch of government that's in somebody else's hands. Mm. Republicans think the presidency and the executive branch is too powerful. Democrats think the Supreme Court is too powerful. Of course, the Supreme Court is uh, leans conservative, and the and the presidency is, is held by you know Democrat Joe, Joe Biden right now. The fact is, Americans really don't like restrained government um, if they're the ones exercising power. They only want to restrain if it's the other guy in power. Yeah, as long as it's my dictator, then it's okay, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly right. And the fact is they're getting what they want. Um, we had run a, another piece, and I quoted from it. It's by a Gene Healy who wrote a book, The Cult of the Presidency. Yeah. Uh, it came out about 15 years ago, although it's just been revised recently because, frankly, the presidency is getting more culty. And he pointed out that um, over decades the presidency has been accumulating more and more unilateral power as people ask the government to do more and more. And the president is the face of the government, the most obvious you know, singular face, and people keep on handing off more authority to the executive branch because they want the president to fix everything to the point now where presidents can do stuff like – Try to you know try to absolve people of owing the student loans. Try to uh, you know uh, you know pass um, executive orders that kind of legislates um, unilaterally. Um, we're not at an elective monarchy yet, but we're getting very close to that point. And the fact is that there's a, there's a significant constituency out there for an elective monarchy, so long as they think it's somebody on their side who's exercising that power. Yeah. And so as we look at that, and I think there's a, another element to this that's really fascinating to me, and that is, uh, so we have citizens who are looking to Washington more and more to solve any big problem, whether it's a student loan problem, whatever, whatever it may be, look to the president, look to the executive branch to just do it with the stroke of a pen. We also have Congress that continues to abdicate authority to the executive branch so that they don't have to be held accountable for things. And that also helps to consolidate that power in a an elected monarchy. Oh, absolutely so. I mean, we've seen that in terms of war powers, where Congress doesn't want to be, you have to go through the messy, you know, um, act of, of engaging in violence. They delegate it to the executive branch. A lot of laws these days are kind of written with broad frameworks with the details to be filled in by the executive branch. And then Congress just does nothing some, you know, a lot of the time. Yeah. Now, the fact is, Congress not passing a law doesn't mean it's a do-nothing Congress. If Congress mm. votes down a law, Maybe that's the something that, that they're supposed to be doing. But if they're just stuck and if they don't want responsibility, if they just want to pose before cameras and then pass responsibility off to the executive branch, we are going to end up with an empowered executive branch and a legislature that kind of becomes vestigial. Yeah, it's, uh, such a, a powerful thing in all of that. And then, of course, the, the problem with all of that in the current model, without a real monarchy, is when the executive branch does things by the executive order, then somebody files a lawsuit that works its way up to the Supreme Court, and then the Supreme Court becomes incredibly political, uh, and we wonder why. Well, exactly so. I mean, if you have uh, a presidency that becomes kind of the fulfillment of people's hopes, wishes, and fears, 
And the only check on it, um, to one extent or another, is is the, going to be the Supreme Court. They're going to be seen at odds with each other, and those who favor whatever their, you know, whoever is in the White House at the time um, is doing, are going to resent the Supreme Court, and then the Supreme Court is going to be the rally point for those who oppose that president of the White House. So, and that's exactly what we're seeing, of course, in the numbers with Republicans kind of supporting the uh, the, the Supreme Court against the presidency, and Democrats supporting the president against the Supreme Court. I mean. That's exactly the uh, the dynamic that's taken place in recent years. Yeah, uh, this is a great piece, JD Chichilli, uh, one of the best of the best, uh, contributing editor at Reason. It is your must read assignment for the day. Americans don't want a dictatorship, but they're creating one anyway. JD, as always, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me on. So the think again moment for all of us today is: if we really don't want a dictatorship, then we better not create one or allow it to be created by our action or our inaction. We'll be right back. Think again on Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger. Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Every business faces challenges, but complicated, expensive, and uncertain shipping shouldn't be one of them. With USPS Ground Advantage from the United States Postal Service, you can avoid all the noise. No more unexpected surcharges, hidden fees, or complex rate structures. It's just easy, cost-effective, and dependable shipping. Tune your business's frequency to success and turn shipping to your advantage. Learn how at usps.com slash advantage. USPS Ground Advantage. Simple, affordable, reliable. April in Utah means warmer temps, spring runoff, and yes, road work. For every spring surprise, rely on KSL News Radio. Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon cover what happened overnight from 5 to 9. Dave and Debbie and Boyd Matheson have in depth conversation during the day. And Jeff Kaplan takes you home with his trademark minute of news. All season, every day. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. Every business faces challenges, but complicated, expensive, and uncertain shipping shouldn't be one of them. With USPS Ground Advantage from the United States Postal Service, you can avoid all the noise. No more unexpected surcharges, hidden fees, or complex rate structures. It's just easy, cost-effective, and dependable shipping. Tune your business's frequency to success and turn shipping to your advantage. Learn how at usps.com advantage. USPS Ground Advantage. Simple, affordable, reliable. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a new Samsung Galaxy A15 for just $99. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Good talk. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and StraightTalk.com. For network management practices, visit StraightTalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. In-store activation on single silver unlimited plan or higher required. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. Your neighbor Greg loves the springtime here in Utah, but he hates to paint, so he called Rhino Shield. We live in a beautiful two-story home that was built in 1916. Really been prepped and painted very, very poorly. Rhino Shield ceramic technology is formulated for our unique climate here in Utah and is class one fire rated. We really had a lot of detail work in the team at Rhino Shield. We spent really four days just on the prep work, and we were so excited to see that. And the cleanup was just impeccable. Utah, get the 25 25- year guaranteed protection of rhino shield right now for 15 percent off the regular price we've gotten numerous compliments and we've actually even had some of the longer term residents of our community thank us for for protecting the integrity of our home this offer is limited so call now 435-246-4466 435-246-4466 or rhinoshieldwest.com How do you protect your business against cyber attacks and ransomware? Learn at the annual WebCheck Cyber Summit. Register today at webcheckscurity.com. That's webcheckscurity.com. 
Hear elevated conversation on crucial issues. Boyd Matheson on Inside Sources. Welcome back to Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. It's great to be with you today, as always. And of course, Utahns are passionate about the unique and incredible outdoor spaces that can be found throughout the Beehive State, throughout the Mountain West. Protecting those spaces of natural wonder is critically important, as well as improving access so that more people can share in the benefits of exploring the great outdoors and figuring out the balance point in all of that. Having an and conversation rather than the fake fight and the vault's choice. And someone who's been in the middle of making sure we get to those conversations is Representative John Curtis, representative uh, of Utah's 3rd Congressional District, of course, uh, and recently uh, passed in the House. Uh, the Explore Act uh, that gets into a lot of these places and spaces. And uh, he joins us on the line from our nation's capital to talk about it. And Representative Curtis, welcome back to the show. Hello, Boyd. Uh, great to be with you. And what a fun topic. Yeah, this is uh, one of those that uh, there is no bloodletting. There is no <laughs> there is no pejorative laced uh, intro to this one. Uh, but let's get into this because to me, this one is important. It is one that could be polarizing uh, when some people look at it in terms of protection or climate change or protecting the lands and so on. Yeah. Uh, I think the approach to this is is really crucial. And I know there's actually four bills kind of put together into the package here in terms of the Explore Act, but walk us through that. Well, uh, thank you. At a top line, these bills all target um, more access, uh, better access, affordable access to our outdoors, and um, also encouraging uh, by more not just our popular places that we're loving to death, but dispersing that uh, throughout the other wonderful uh, assets that we have, not just in our state, but across the country. There's a lot to like here for everybody, um, from our tour guides who we're making permitting, permitting easier for them and less expensive, to those who go out on their own and worry about safety. We're working on broadband so we can communicate with emergency uh, responders. Uh, everything top to bottom, it, it's just a really good act. And as you say, it's something that everybody can get their arms around and be pleased that we're doing. Yeah, well, let's unpack it just a little bit in terms of some of the specifics. So this is a, uh, I love this too, the fact that it was bipartisan, bicameral. So there, there aren't a lot of things going on where we can say, look, we got both sides <laughs> of the aisle and both chambers of Congress coming together like ar- yeah. around this. And so let's let's start with just that access component too, because I think that's a, an important element to all of this. Yeah, and uh, one of those uh, access points is uh, there are a host of small businesses in Utah who take groups uh, into the outdoors, and thank goodness they do because a lot of people don't know where to go and and particularly coming from out of state don't know how to do it safely. And so from a permitting process, this this streamlines the permitting of that and also reduces the fees uh, for people. And then another important thing as far as access that I think it's important is it, it, it creates innovative models to encourage uh, the public re- recreation in the, our less traveled areas. And uh, as, as I mentioned, you know, it's it's not hard to see how we're, uh, we're loving our popular areas to death, but it helps with the access and, and the knowledge of less traveled areas. Yeah, and I think that's a, an important component that, as you say, some of these things we're loving to death. We've got too many things, and so dispersing that, spreading that out, and we have so many areas that could be developed in that way, I think is a, a crucial component to that. You also have the Connect Our Parks Act, which is part of this whole uh, package of bills, uh, really in terms of safety and security and broadband service. How did we work there? It, it the National Parks to provide broadband service, which is – you just mentioned, um, you know, on, on the one hand, a lot of us like to go to these places to unplug and to get away, but from time to time for emergency services or finding, you know, our lost kids or, or things like that, it would be really helpful to have that communications available. So it, it directs our parks to put in that type of communications throughout their parks, huge safety component. And I'm sure most of your listeners have never run into a problem outdoors, but there are a lot of people that do. <laughs> and so that's a, a, an important safety component, I think, into this bill as well. Yeah, and sometimes it's just for people like me who just need the oxygen tank or someone to come pick me up <laughs> because I can't make it back. Ah, uh, come on, boy. <laughs> Not you. We, we know that. But there are some, right? Uh, also talk to us a little bit about uh, biking, kind of the long-distance trails, which is a, a newer component uh, to some of the things there in our national parks. 
you know, and I'm really pleased. This was a bipartisan, originally bill with uh, Representative Goose, a Democrat out of Colorado. Our districts are actually very similar. And this bill helps us identify what we call long distance bike trails. And um, it, so it, it expands the mapping resources on these trails and, and makes them more uh, accessible to people. And, and I'm someone who, I'll tell you what, if you, if you said, what is your ideal vacation? I would hop on a bike and go on a long distance trail with my wife and enjoy, you know, not just a, a short, quick little bike ride, but a multi-day ride. And it helps us identify those and map those uh, around the country. Yeah, there's two other components I want to get to that I think are really important and often get lost in some of the bigger headline components. One is this uh, kind of the gateway communities that we often don't think about, kind of the ebbs and flows, Mm -hmm. housing. Uh, Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about that. And then I also want you to touch, uh, because there's also a component within this bill about accessibility for those uh, with disabilities or who have a hard time making that access. Exactly. So both of those are are really good points. And if you think about uh, particularly our, our, our national parks, the, these gateway communities. Um, imagine being in one of these communities with just a few uh, residents paying property tax and, and things like that, and yet having the swarms of people come through them. So it supports these communities with uh, dealing with housing shortages, parking and infrastructure, and, and some of the overcrowding issues. And then, as you mentioned, another component is we want to make sure that these uh, beautiful locations are available to everybody, and sometimes we overlook our, our, those with disabilities. So this creates uh, new accessibility trails and recreational opportunities in our public lands for those with disabilities. And what a home run that is, and how important that is to just make sure everybody can can use these um, beautiful uh, resources. Uh, well, this is one of the positive things that we see going back in our nation's capital. These are not the things that always get talked about uh, because they're not the uh, clickbaity headline kinds of things, uh, but they do matter for us, especially here in the state of Utah. And I, I want to throw one last component in because this one matters to me as a grandpa, uh, and that is the <laughs> fact that uh, we had the announcement today that uh, American Airlines will be having flights from Provo to Dallas Fort Worth, that matters because five of my grandchildren are just outside of <laughs> Dallas, and uh, I know that's something you worked on as oh. a mayor and uh, things you've continued to do in Congress. I'll tell you, it's so exciting that announcement today. And listen, uh, I love the Salt Lake Airport. I spent a lot of time there. I know Ogden's got an important airport, but this is uh, this is a this is an out of the park kit uh, for Provo Airport. And it, one of the reasons is the airlines they have the, uh, right now. I love them but they don't work well for connections. And um, this this will allow people to use the Provo Airport to go not to just to Dallas, Fort Worth, and Phoenix, but then connect for around the world and around the, the United States. And um, first of all, it's hard to believe you have five grandkids. I actually have and nine, it, and, but just five of them are in <laughs> <okay>. Texas. <laughs> in one spot. So I tell you what, this means Boyd's going to be traveling down to Provo. And uh, when you do come by, and I'll show you one of our amazing restaurants in downtown Provo. Uh, and uh, we'll, 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 you see that hidden pitch I've got in there for Provo. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and, just, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, just a really important economic development and a quality of life development for the Utah Valley. Yeah, no question about it. And those of us who uh, live in Utah Valley, I think the loudest cheer may have come from my wife, Debbie, uh, who uh, will be probably the first <laughs> one on the first flight in October uh, heading down to Dallas to see the grandkids. So, Oh, I love it. She might see me on the flight. All right, good stuff. Well, before I let you go, uh, give us one thing we ought to be watching for as we watch Congress uh, in the week ahead. Well, this size issue, and you know, this is interesting, Boyd, you and I, we, we probably had to talk like a whole hour about this at some point. It's a question I've not had once in, and as you know, I'm doing dozens of town hall meetings. It's it's kind of into the weeds, and it's hard for people to understand, but it is a very critical issue. It, it, it tries to balance our national security with our privacy, and we're really conflicted back here in finding that balance between where do we let uh, government agencies look into our lives to protect us, and at what point have they crossed a line and they're now getting into our privacy? And it's uh, it's a brutal conversation back here. For You, you talk about uh, when you started this, like sometimes it, there's, it just doesn't look like there's a good choice. And we're being torn, those of us who are being asked to vote on this, between those two very important things that we're trying to balance. So I'd, I'd tell your listeners to watch that. Uh, there'll, there'll be some movement on it uh, this week, and it, it very likely will go into next and then um, once that's done, uh, the speaker's promised to turn to the funding of Ukraine and, and um, Israel and, and Taiwan. 
And as you well know, that's also um, a, a tough issue uh, yeah. back here. So lots to talk about, and I hope I get back on and would love to explore those with you and your listeners. Yeah, no question. No easy days uh, back there in our nation's capital no. right now. And the spice no. question, uh, I think the approach that you're taking in terms of the and question, that it's not either or, it's not national security or privacy. There's a way to get to that and, and uh, those who are willing to yes, have the exactly. and conversation will get us to a better spot from a policy standpoint. Representative John Curtis, uh, representing Utah's 3rd Congressional District, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Boyd. All right, we'll step aside for some bottom of the hour news. More inside sources coming up next on KSL News Radio. Stick around. It's 1:30 at KSL News Radio. I'm Britt Johnson. KSL's top story this hour. We've just gotten word that Southern Utah University has received the all clear from, from police after evacuating and searching the campus following threats of gunshots this morning. Longtime former Salt Lake City Mayor Ted Wilson has passed away. KSL News Radio's Tammy Kikuchi reports. The family of Mayor Ted Wilson shared that he passed away early this morning at the age of 84. He had congestive heart failure and Parkinson's disease. He's described as an eternal optimist who loved people who loved him back. Wilson worked as a staff member for Congressman Wayne Owens and served as mayor of Salt Lake City during the city's transition from commission to a council form of government in the 70s. He was also the Democratic nominee for governor in 1988. He was also the head of the Hinckley Institute of Politics at the University of Utah for several years. Ted Wilson was surrounded by his family when he passed. If you get pulled over in West Jordan for a burnt-out headlight, you might not get a ticket. Instead, an officer may hand you a voucher for a free repair. The West Jordan Police Department is joining forces with Lights On, and it's the first partnership of its kind in Utah. The goal is to educate and build community connection between the police department and residents. Your money at this moment. The Dow has gained 78 points, and the S&P is up 46 points. The NASDAQ up 276 points. Coming up, it's warming up. KSL weather is next. KSL News Time, 131. We hope you have the right app on your phone for news. You probably have dozens. But the KSL News Radio app, well, it makes our live stream super easy. Plus, our talk shows are right there as podcast for your workday. That's the app for KSL News Radio. I know it's Thursday, but give me 60 seconds and I'll explain how spending $29 guarantees your air conditioner won't break down this summer, or we'll give you your money back. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and when you have Any Hour do the annual maintenance for your air conditioner, it comes with our no breakdown guarantee, 801-443-7400. Normally, we charge $129 to tune up your air conditioner, but not today. If you call today, Thursday, April 11th, and mention you heard this ad, we'll give you $100 off and tune up your air conditioner for only $29. 801-443-7400. If your AC breaks down any time this summer after we've tuned it up, we'll dispatch a technician to your home to diagnose and troubleshoot your system for free. And we'll give you back the $29 you paid for the tune-up. Where else are you going to find an offer with this little risk? You literally get your money back if your air conditioner breaks down. Call any hour services and schedule your $29 air conditioner tune-up. 801-443-7400. You can Google Any Hour Services. You can even schedule online at anyhourservices.com. Ooh, ma. What was that? That is Business Phone Bliss with the UMA Cloud Phone System. It handles all our voice, video, and messaging needs. You sound very... Calm? I am. UMA has everything I need to run my business more efficiently, like virtual receptionist, call routing, and video conferencing. And it starts at just $19.95 per month per user, plus taxes and fees. UMA. Nice. Find your business calm at UMA.com slash radio. Now... Now your ideas don't have to wait. Now they have everything they need to come to life. Dell Technologies and Intel are creating technology that loves ideas, loves expanding your business, evolving your passions. We push what technology can do, so great ideas can happen right now. Find out how to bring your ideas to life at Dell.com. Welcome to now. Hey! Have you saved more than $200,000 in an IRA or 401k? You may not realize it now, but you've got a big problem on your hands. And that problem is taxes. Because if you don't take advantage of some tax planning strategies now, Uncle Sam could take a big chunk of your hard-earned retirement savings. 
Learn how you could reduce the taxes on your IRA and 401k with a free retirement tax savings analysis. It's from Boss Retirement Solutions. If you've saved more than $200,000, schedule your free tax strategy session now by calling 801-896-9622. Discover the tax planning strategies that could dramatically reduce your taxes in retirement. Call 801-896-9622. That's 801-896-9622. Advisory services offered through Boss Retirement Advisors, an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Insurance products and services offered through Boss Retirement Solutions. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Meese. In Utah County, we are still looking at the clearing of this crash. Southbound to I-15, just after Lehigh Main Street. It is going to be to the left and a little bit of backup remains, but again, we're in the final cleanup stages. Rekindle Adventure in place, in a place everyone connects with nature. Cedar City Brian Head, shopping, dining, museums, spring skiing, tubing, hiking, biking, disc golf, and much more. Level up your adventure. Visit cedarcity.com. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL weather, our high today is 72, and we get more of this beautiful weather that we're experiencing. Tomorrow is up to 78 degrees with mostly sunny skies, and we get to keep this weather going for about a week. Temperatures won't take another dip until the middle of next week. Right now, it's 66 degrees and sunny. I'm Britt Johnson from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Inside Sources. Inside Sources. America's Voice of Reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. One of the things that we often talk about that I continue to believe is the most important conversation we can be having is the conversation about the future. Our children, our grandchildren. What kind of world are we going to be leaving for our children and our grandkids? And how do we make it better for them? How do we write the future knowing that uh, they're going to live in the world that we leave them? I think it's one of those questions that uh, could actually be interesting in terms of the political campaign. Now, political campaigns often talk about the future, uh, but usually in big, broad strokes uh, rather than specifics. A fascinating piece in The Hill today talking about how the Biden campaign could actually use that focus on the future, uh, especially in some of those crucial swing states. Really thrilled to have joining us on the program, Bruce Ackerman, Sterling Professor of Law and Political Science Science at Yale, and the author most recently of The Postmodern Predicament. And uh, Bruce, welcome to the show. Hi. Uh, how are you, Boyd? <laughs> Doing Good to well. Be here. Give us, uh, give us kind of the, the, the present uh, here in terms of uh, what the president could be doing and where the focus could be and how it might be advantageous to him going into this election cycle. Sure. Um, the uh, uh, president uh, in his first term proposed in a really dramatic uh, demonstration of concern for the future uh, that um, – uh, uh, the United States uh, appropriate $375 billion for universal child care for every child uh, between the age of 33 and f- between the age of three and five. Uh, of course, it was up to the parents to send them there. Um, in this, he was uh, following this remarkable example of the French, uh, who over the last 25 years have established a universal child care uh, system. Um, uh, precisely, uh, indeed, Macron, uh, the president president, uh, enacted a, uh, a statute which explicitly said to fulfill our responsibility to future generations. Uh, that was the uh, foundational uh, statute uh, that he enacted. Um, it um, uh, 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 sa- provides uh, for uh, neighborhood child care centers in every single neighborhood within the country in which a 
social, uh, a trained social psychologist uh, stays with the same six or eight kids while they're three, four, and five for four hours a day if their parents uh, send them. Uh, uh, and during those three, and there are programs and all this, I don't need to get into the details. During those uh, three years, the social psychologist uh, gets to know each kid very well and can understand each child's anxieties, particular skills, uh, supports them uh, to the extent that when they go to, to elementary school, um, it has now been statistically shown that uh, uh, children who are poor, come from poor families, do just as well as people who come from, children who come from rich families. Uh, uh, it's really quite remarkable. Uh, 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 this is the first time in the history of the world in which uh, the promise of the American and French Revolution uh, uh, that uh, uh, people are actually uh, free <laughs> uh, and begin life on an equal basis uh, has been realized in real life. Uh, um, uh, over the past 25 years, this has been such a successful program that although they had no um, obligation to do so, 99% of parents are sending their kids to school mm. be, uh, uh, for 11 months a year. Needless to say, August is vacation time, <laughs> but 11 months a year. Uh, 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 to these schools. Yeah. This is precisely <clears throat> what Biden is trying to do. Yeah. And uh, this was uh, a, 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 a mansion, mansion rather, uh, uh, the conservative uh, senator is an emphatic supporter of this idea. Yeah. Uh, this is not, this is an idea that can bridge the gap between, you know, uh, liberals and conservatives, et cetera, uh, because everyone really is concerned about their children. Yeah, fascinating, uh, fascinating stuff. And uh, again, everyone can you can check out the uh, piece uh, by Bruce Ackerman. You can check it out in the Hill, thehill.com. It's the postmodern revolution and uh, why it provides the key to a President Biden reelection. And uh, Professor, we appreciate you joining us on the show today. Thanks so much. Right. Oh, well, thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. All right. A fascinating perspective there in terms of some of the gaps and some of the things that can happen uh, and the, the role of family. One of the things that I thought was really interesting in the piece was just how resilient kids continue to be. Uh, as the professor mentioned, uh, that you do have a lot of these students that came from very poor families were able to catch up rather quickly. Uh, once they got into the school system and, and had that support. And I think a lot of this uh, goes beyond just uh, systems uh, and government and schools, uh, but I think it's that social network. It's that connection to other people. Uh, it's to, to coaches and teachers and instructors. Uh, it's that civil society component that I think brings all of this together. Uh, and I think the most important thing, and I think the thing the press professor was alluding to, uh, was the fact that when we do set just the partisan stuff aside, then we can start exploring, hey, I may not agree with this totally, or I may not agree with that totally, but there might be a piece of that. If we combined it with this and a little bit of that, then we can have a different conversation and possibly come up with a better solution. Uh, and as he pointed out, uh, that is usually where we get the best results is when we bring some of those different components together. Obviously, strengthening home and family uh, is an important component to all of that. Bringing the best of the government and government's role in all of that is absolutely crucial to the conversation. Bringing the best of the school system, it has a role to play. And then bringing, bringing the best of neighborhoods, society, and community is where we really get to the things that matter the most. And so we can chart a different way that isn't just all government raised the child isn't all everybody's on their own and this rugged individualism, but we can get to a better plot path. We can get to a better space. And ultimately what we're all after, I think what everybody agrees on is this is how we have to get to the better result for our children, for our grandchildren. And there's a lot of different ways we can help get there. This is an interesting perspective 
in terms of some components that we need to include in that conversation. We'll be right back. Spring is a great time to elevate the look of your home and landscape by adding beautiful flowers to the yard and patio. And pros and hobbyists alike know that the best flowers are grown by Olson's Greenhouse, right here in the mountain valleys of Utah. This is Brian with Olson's Greenhouse, and my family has been growing flowers with love and care for over 80 years. That's four generations of a local, family-run Utah business. So whether you're looking to add a pop of color to the back patio or a beautiful flower bed to the front landscape, Flowers from Olson's Greenhouse are the perfect finishing touch to make your yard a joy to relax in. Stop by OGG.com or find us on Instagram at Olson's Greenhouse Gardens, where you'll find inspiring photos to get you going on your flower gardening journey. You can also find a local retailer carrying plants from Olson's Greenhouse. That's OGG.com for Olson's Greenhouse Gardens, where you can dream big, dream bold, and dream in color with beautiful plants and flowers from Olson's Greenhouse. Sign up for KSL Text Alerts and you could win cash. Text the word cash to 57500 for a chance to win $250. That's cash to 57500. Plus, you'll get breaking news and traffic updates right to your phone. Want to win more prizes? Text contest to 57500. Jazz fans, text the word jazz for breaking Utah jazz news. And Cougar fans, text BYU to 57500 for the latest on the Cougars. Message and data rates may apply. For an alternate entry method and complete contest rules, go to KSL News Radio. Advertising used to be simple. Your options were radio, TV, newspaper, and let's not forget the yellow pages. Now it seems like a tidal wave of options. Podcast, cable TV, streaming, OTT, CTV, audio network, smart speakers. On top of that, you need digital marketing for your website along with SEM, SEO, display, video, YouTube, email, and all the social media platforms. Look, you're the expert in your business. Wouldn't it be nice to have an expert to market you? We are Bonneville Salt Lake, the local marketing and media company you know and trust. We reach customers across all digital and social platforms and have the reach of traditional advertising available as well. We find your customer anytime, any place, anywhere on any device here in Utah or anywhere in the world. We work to optimize your results with our in-house local team of experts, providing you with qualified leads, not just impressions. Contact Stephanie Palmer at KSL for a free consultation including a complete digital audit with no obligation or cost to you email s palmer at ksl.com that's s palmer at ksl.com stop for a moment and think about this do you know how much money in your 401k or ira is actually yours or will the government take a bigger chunk than you thought remember you still might owe taxes on that money but do you have a plan to help make sure you don't pay more than you should at Capital Wealth Advisors, we believe you deserve to keep more of what you've earned, which is why we're here to help you navigate the confusing world of retirement taxes. It's your money. You deserve to know what's at stake. Right now, taxes are historically low, but they won't be this low forever. So call the Capital Wealth Advisors team today so you don't miss out on this opportunity. 801-210-5500. That's 801-210-5500. You work hard for your money and we'll work just as hard to help you keep it. Capital Wealth Advisors, 801-210-5500. Advisory services offered through Capital Wealth Advisors, LLC, a state of Utah registered investment advisor. Firm may not give tax advice. Alpine Home Medical, we bring wellness home. Do you find it exhausting getting up from your favorite chair every day? Say goodbye to discomfort and hello to a world of ease. Hi, I'm Jay Broadbent with Alpine Home Medical. And you have so many options when buying a lift chair. For the highest quality, always come to Alpine. Our lift chairs are more than just furniture. They're your ticket to independence and relaxation. Plus, with our spring savings event, we've just marked down some of our chairs that are ready for you to take home. With an unbelievable warranty, you can shop with confidence knowing your comfort is our priority. So stop by any of our 11 locations today and explore our high-quality inventory. Or visit us online at alpinehomemedical.com. That's alpinehomemedical.com. Alpine Home Medical, we bring wellness home. Hey guys, do you know your T-level? 
Revive Men's Health here in Salt Lake City is helping you take that first step toward better health and enhanced intimacy with a free testosterone level test, exam, and consultation. Plus, for this month only, qualified patients can kickstart their treatment with a free supply of ED medication. Revive's customized ED treatments can provide immediate results, restore blood flow naturally, and even bring spontaneity back into your love life. With both in-person and telemedicine appointments available, plus free shipping directly to you, Revive takes the hassle out of treating low T and ED. Having an optimal testosterone level can change your whole life, and it starts with knowing your T level. Take that first step and book your free testosterone test, free exam, and free consultation. And kickstart your treatment with a free supply of ED medication this month only. Call Revive Men's Health Salt Lake City at 801-263-7777. That's 801-263-7777. Or visit revivemenshealth.com. Hello, Spring. This is your friend, Adventure. You've been on my mind, and I'm wondering where you've been. Weather's warming, and a word on the street is... You're looking for riders to enjoy Cedar City, Brian Head's spectacular trails? Well, I'm told Three Peaks Recreation and Parawam's Evil Water Trail System are the bomb. Or perhaps you've changed. Maybe you're more into hiking? Kolob Canyon or Thor's Hammer Trail make a perfect meetup place. Oh, oh, and don't forget Cedar City's spectacular views accompanied by disc golf at the Thunderbird Garden Course. Listen, I've always been here. I still like the same things. Spring skiing, tubing, but I'm more mature now. Uh, my interests have expanded. There's Cedar City's Southern Utah Museum of Art, strolls downtown, fine dining or shopping. I'm more interesting than you know. Let's connect and rekindle our relationships starting in the spot we always enjoy. Cedar City Brian Head. Look me up at visitcedarcity.com. Your old friend, Adventure. Social Security is with you through life's journey from birth to retirement. As your life changes year to year, so do your needs. For over 80 years, Social Security has helped to meet your needs and is committed to improving access to the services that make a difference in your life. Today, you can verify your earnings, estimate your future benefits, apply for retirement, manage your benefits, and even change your address, all from the comfort of your home. Social Security's online services help put you in control with secure access to your information anytime, anywhere, allowing you to spend more time with family, friends, or simply just enjoying the day. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. See what you can do online at socialsecurity.gov. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. Any Hour Services free furnace sale is going on right now. If you haven't scheduled your free estimate yet, do it now. Call Any Hour Services today or schedule online at anyhourservices.com. Dave and Dejanovic. One person described it like this. I like having a thousand one-minute conversations. So often we think we've got to dive in head first and know everything before we can speak on something. No, we can have a bunch of little conversations. There's more than one opinion and more than one opinion or viewpoint matters. I want our listeners to walk away from the show knowing that more than one opinion is valid. Listen for Dave and Dejanovic, 9 to noon on KSL News Radio. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Britt Johnson. First, longtime former Salt Lake City Mayor Ted Wilson has passed away this morning at age 84. Second, West Jordan police are starting to hand out free repair vouchers instead of tickets for burnt out headlights. Third, police have given the all clear notification after evacuating and searching the SVU campus after a threat this morning. Right now it's 66 degrees and sunny in Salt Lake City. Back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Get deeper insights on the news from Inside Sources. We often talk about Utah being not just a crossroads to the West, but a crossroads to the world. You may remember that our friends at World Trade Center Utah, along with uh, Governor Spencer Cox, led a trade mission in 2022 uh, that has led to all kinds of interesting conversations, connections, and alliances. And there's one coming up uh, here on the 14th to the 18th of this month here in the state of Utah around agriculture uh, and uh, really having a different look in terms of how do we go about innovating in that particular space and it is bringing people from all over the world and we're actually joined on the other side of the world by Tal Wilk Glazier, uh, CEO of Saffron Tech, an Israeli-based agricultural tech company. And uh, Tal, welcome to the show and uh, you're going to be making your way from Israel here to Utah. Tell us why you're coming and what you expect to see here. 
Hi, I'm definitely going to start my travel within two days. I'm, I'm super excited about it. Actually, Ariely and Frontier, together with the Utah Tech University, arrange amazing event, allowing us the opportunity to meet many influencers and potential partners around Utah. And we believe that this is amazing opportunity to meet very interesting ecosystem and build a unique environment which allow us to develop our startup. Yeah, and so tell us a little bit more about uh, your startup and what it is that you do and uh, how that actually helps in the agricultural space. So Saffron Tech has revolutionized the saffron industry. Saffron is a prestige spice full of active compounds, which is being used as a mood stabilizer. So it's being used not only as a spice, but only in the nutraceutical and the cosmetics uh, industries. Growing saffron in traditional manners is very non-economical. Um, it's very inefficient. It flowers only once a year. Uh, it requires a lot of land and a lot of labor. Saffron Tech developed a growth protocol allowing us to uh, have four cycles of cultivation of saffron a year. And it's allowing us to have a supportive technology which produce a better quality saffron in a higher amount in an economical manner. Oh, that's fantastic! And uh, and why Utah? Why is it? Uh, why is Utah uh, a good space for for you and other uh, agritech companies uh, to come together? So I understood that the ecosystem in Utah is very advanced, very supportive for agricultural startup. You can find not only experts in the agricultural industry, but also supportive ecosystem which allowing us to have the needed funding and the needed expertise in different, in different areas. So the challenges are not only around agriculture and not only around the chemistry around it, but also having holistic solution, which will allow us to develop the startup in an optimal manner. So Saffron Tech is looking for partners, looking for innovative ideas, looking for a, a additional technologies that can complement our technology. And I'm very eager to meet the experts in Utah and build the right ecosystem to support our startup. Uh, I think that's uh, that's fascinating. And and it's not just the uh, the environment and the climate, it's also those connections, uh, uh, different companies that have similar values that are taking a, a similar approach in terms of growing that startup. Tell us about the conversations uh, that you'll be having around that part of the business. So I think that, first of all, the event of uh, having few startups coming from all around the world, meeting very specifically the right people in the right place, facilitating this conversation is amazing opportunity. That just from speaking with different people coming with the same goal will be amazing opportunity. The uh, ability to learn one from the other and to find different directions to develop the company can be fascinating. The long relations between Ariely to Utah, allowing us to have a maximum value from these few days, meeting a lot of people in a very short time, and I guess also allowing the people from Utah, many meet various different startups in a short uh, time, allowing to maximize this, the time and the value from such a uh, travel. Uh, wonderful. And give us any uh, insight from your experience, previous visits to Utah, interactions with the local agritech community uh, that have influenced your uh, your participation in this year's event. Frankly, the only chance I had to visit Utah was to be a tourist. And I had amazing experience coming to Zion Park, Park and to see Brace Canyon, but I never met uh, the agricultural sector in uh, Utah yet, so I'm very eager to meet it. Oh, wonderful. Well, we're looking forward to having you and hosting you here in the in the Beehive State, both as a tourist and, and now as someone in the uh, agritech space. Uh, I think it's going to be an extraordinary event. The public's invited to experience uh, an, an amazing part of this whole program, the, the final pitch, the expo event on Thursday, the 18th. Entrepreneurs will be presenting their agritech solutions through uh, compelling pitches and uh, attendees can engage in networking sessions with fellow entrepreneurs, investors, farmers, industry leaders, and so on. Uh, it's really an extraordinary event. And uh, Tal, we appreciate you joining us uh, from Israel today. We look forward to getting you into the Beehive State 
and I look forward to hearing about your business and seeing the opportunities here uh, as Utah continues to be a crossroads to the world. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. I look forward to meeting you all next week. This is going to be such a uh, an interesting uh, conversation. Uh, Ariely Capital, again, is the sponsor of Agritech 2024. Uh, and it's just one more example of where Utah, it really is the crossroads to the world and uh, bringing a lot of these agritech businesses and these startups into the state of Utah. Great networking opportunity uh, and great innovation opportunity as well. Well, that wraps up hour number one of Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. We're going to step aside for some top of the hour news. Don't go anywhere when we come back. Our friend Tim Shriver, Impact Scholar at the University of Utah, part of the Dignity Index, uh, along with Natalie Gochner from the University of Utah, will join us coming up to kick off hour number two on Inside Sources. We'll be right back. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. This is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. It's 2 o'clock at KSL News Radio. I'm Britt Johnson. KSL's top story this hour. We've got breaking news on KSL News Radio. There are three more counts of attempted murder against On Pham for his alleged involvement in two additional targeted auto pedestrian crashes with three victims. The Salt Lake County District Attorney's Office filed charges in March of 2024 against Pham for his alleged involvement in four other targeted auto pedestrian crashes over seven months. Members of the International Olympic Committee are touring some of the proposed venues today. UTA Executive Director Jay Fox says the committee members seem impressed with our transit system after a tracks train ride Wednesday. I mean, I think they wanted to know how we integrated with, uh, with our road network. They wanted to know how we integrated with bus and commuter rail. And I talked about our central facilities and um, that was certainly the good work of our planning people to make sure that people have seamless transitions on our network. The committee members will be in town until Saturday. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre says there's been some progress in the effort to get aid to the Palestinians. Over the past few days, over 1,000 trucks loaded with humanitarian aid have gotten into Gaza and with over 300 trucks going into Gaza yesterday, just yesterday alone. That was Jean-Pierre at her briefing earlier today. Your money at this moment. The Dow has taken a dip and lost two points, but the S&P is still up 38 points. The Nasdaq has gained 271 points. Coming up, gorgeous spring weather is here. KSL Weather is next. KSL News Time, 201. It's a priority for us at this station to bring you all sides of a story and to talk about the news fairly, completely. Get all the facts and be really aware. Utah's Morning News with us, Tim and Amanda. Weekday mornings, 5 to 9 on KSL News Radio. Is using separate office technology like business telephones, chat, video conferencing, and file transferring complicated and pricey? What if all of those things were bundled into one simple product that has over 99.9% uptime, crystal clear quality, and is affordable? And what if you could get your business telephone bundle from a proven office technology partner like Les Olson IT? You can. Les Olson IT. Sometimes owning a small business means making big upgrades. Make them happen with a small business equipment loan from Cypress Credit Union. For a limited time, get a rate discount of 0.50% APR and make the most of affordable credit union rates. Let Cypress help you purchase or upgrade your commercial equipment today. Apply online at cypresscu.com. Cypress Credit Union, your future is our future. Federally insured by NCUA, equal opportunity lender. Springtime in Utah, and if you're a business owner that hates to paint, do what business owner Al did. He called Rhino Shield. I was watching TV one night and saw the Rhino Shield ad, and I thought, well, if they can do a house, they can probably do a building. Rhino Shield ceramic technology is formulated for our unique climate here in Utah and is Class 1 fire rated. So they came out and uh, they gave me a price, showed me how the Rhino works, how it lasts, and how the guarantee works. Utah residential or business, get the 25 year guaranteed protection of Rhino Shield right now for 15% off the regular price. They, they waited for us to leave and they work Saturday and Sunday so they wouldn't affect our business at all. This was the great part of it. I came back Sunday night and 
you couldn't even tell they were here. There was no paint on the ground. They did a fantastic job. Utah, this offer is limited, so call 435-246-4466. 435-246-4466 or visit rhinoshieldwest.com. No paint, no Shield. This heat's nice, but the real heat, it's coming. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and now is a great time to schedule a preseason AC tune-up. And I'm about to save you some money. Normally, we charge $129 to tune up your air conditioner. But if you call today, Thursday, April 11th, and mention you heard this ad, we'll give you $100 off and tune up your air conditioner for only $29. Call Any Hour Services today and schedule. 801-443-7400. Manufacturers recommend annual maintenance to save on utility bills, identify breakdowns before they happen, and to help your air conditioner last for as many years as possible. 801-443-7400. If it's more convenient, go to anyhourservices.com and look for the red button that says Book Online. Schedule your $29 tune-up there. That's $129 value for only $29. If you get a hold of us today, call Any Hour Services right now at 801-443-7400. Google Any Hour Services or schedule online at anyhourservices.com. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Meese. Nice and quiet on the Valley Freeways and Salt Lake City PD has just wrapped up a crash at 3rd Avenue and 9th East. Murdoch Hyundai, home of Tucson SEL. Lease for only $375. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL weather, now's the time to head outside. We've got sunny skies and highs in the 70s. We'll even get to 78 tomorrow. It'll cool off slightly as we move into next week, but temperatures won't take too big of a dip until about Wednesday. Right now it's 66 degrees and sunny. I'm Britt Johnson from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Inside Sources. Inside Inside Sources. America's Voice of Reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Well, as we often say on the show, our nation seems to be stuck in this uh, age of rage and season of unreason, and we have to get past all of that. And one of our friends of the show that uh, we are always grateful to have back, who's doing something about it, is our friend Tim Shriver. And of course, uh, Tim. Chairman of Special Olympics International, co-creator of the Dignity Index, and 27 other things we could spend the rest of this hour talking about, but we won't go there. Uh, We're grateful to have Tim on the show today, uh, along with Natalie Gochner from the Kim Gardner Policy Institute at the University of Utah. And we're going to see if we can't get beyond some of the rage and actually get to some of the reasons. So let's begin. Think you know the news of the day? Think again with Boyd Matheson on KSL News Radio. Well, it is time to think again about what we think we know. Uh, and I think that's uh, in no other place is that more important than how we talk with each other, not at, not to, but with. And uh, Tim, welcome back to the Beehive State. Great to have you. Natalie, welcome back to the program as well. Yeah, happy Thank to you. be in studio with you, Boyd. Uh, you've had a busy day today. We actually did a little recording. I'll put in a pitch for KSL 5 TV. Uh, Tim and I had a great conversation that will air on Sunday edition, 9 a.m. on KSL 5 TV about uh, all of these important topics to the nation and to the state. Uh, Since that moment this morning when we recorded that, uh, you've been off up at the University of Utah as an impact scholar. Uh, Tell us what the day's been like. Well, we had a terrific time uh, with uh, the leadership team at the Salt Lake City School District. Mm. You know, schools are places that where, you know, educators are all trained that uh, they put children in front of you, you teach them all. Uh, you don't choose which kids you teach. Mm. You don't choose kids. You don't teach kids uh, that you like or you don't like. You don't teach kids who are Republicans or Democrats. You teach all kids, right? So schools are places that have an inherent understanding of the idea that no matter what child comes through the door, we're going to treat that child with dignity. Mm. So we're trying to work with educators to help us push forward this idea of dignity at the headline of a school, not just as a subtle understanding, but couldn't we teach children how to communicate with dignity? The answer is we could. Couldn't we study U.S. history and study the examples of contempt and dignity in great political figures? We could. We could study civics. We could study literature and start to understand the way in which dignity works and how it helps us grow and develop and also understand how contempt and dehumanization works and how it destroys comedy and families 
and a sense of purpose in the future. So it was great to be with young people. They were asking me. They were So I was talking to you. Yeah, we have to treat each other with dignity. And one of the high school kids said, well, don't you think that's going to be a little bit uncool in high school? <laughs> And I thought it was such a wonderful <laughs> and honest, honest. question. Honest, yeah. you know, because what he was kind of saying was, look, you know, if you want to be like in the in crowd in high school, you got to be snarky. Mm. Maybe you got to be biting. Maybe you have to use some ridicule. Yeah. And we we got to talking about it, and the young people were all like, yeah, actually, that is what works, but it doesn't have to. Mm. And we could treat each other with dignity and still be cool. Yeah. And I just thought it was a beautiful lesson to I remind that. us that, you know, sometimes we do things to fit in mm-hmm. that we're not proud of. Mm-hmm. Uh, the kids were saying, like, that's what we end up having to do to fit in, but we're not proud of it. Uh, and we got them, in, a, in a, I hope, in a position where they were saying, hey, let's, let's take a chance on doing it differently. Yeah, let's- I love that. And I, and I hope their parents will pay attention to that because <laughs> yeah, right. I think the parents are doing the <laughs> same thing. Teachers, that's what teachers say. <laughs> Kids are not the problem. It's parents. It's, yeah. it's, it's the adults. It's the rest of us. Yeah, you know, as we've talked about this, uh, we have talked about the fact that, you know, we, of course we want to have this impact on our politics and our, our civil discourse. We want to change that dynamic. Uh, but that's not likely coming out of the halls of Congress uh, unless we reward good behavior rather right. than bad behavior. And like our teenagers, if you reward bad behavior, you get more bad behavior. That's right. We seem to be doing that with the politics. Uh, Natalie, look at it from your perspective uh, at the Cam Gardner Institute. Uh, and one, being able to bring someone like Tim in as an impact scholar, I think mm-hmm. this has been a unique thing at the University of Utah that I think should be replicated everywhere. Yeah, this is a credit to our president, Taylor Randall, who basically said we want to be a top 10 public university with unsurpassed societal impact. Mm. He's got a lot of ways that you do that. But one of them is bring these um, public intellectuals to town that can spread impact. Yeah. And I got to go over to Bryant Middle School today where a new school district superintendent, Liz Grant, Mm -hmm. is welcoming Tim Shriver to see, you know, several hundred people in her leadership team of the district and learn about dignity. Yeah. And just as a reminder, we have a dignity index that is a score from one to eight. Mm. One is contempt and eight is dignity. And you've got school kids in the Salt Lake City School District looking at Tim Shriver, who founded this yeah. index, putting up their five fingers and a plus sign, meaning we got to be five and above on the index. Oh, I love that. It's beautiful. Yeah. These kids are saying, we're, you know, we're not going to be on the contempt side. We're going to be on the dignity side, which in the dignity index, you know, reference is five and above. Uh, and Tim, I want the first shirt that says... Dignity is cool. <laughs> but well, there it is. That, that, that might be where we need to get to. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more. I love this whole idea. We, we have so focused on the politics of all of this and, yeah. and that civil discourse side of it. But I love this idea of taking it into history and literature and so many of the other even into the sciences. Yeah. Uh, tell me about that conversation and what that looks like. I love well, that. Well, we're just starting to, to – so here's the thing. W- dignity isn't just a means of being nice. It's actually a means of getting things done. Yeah. It's a means of creating – like if, if you're listening to this and you're about to go home and talk to your brother, your sister, your parents, or your kid, and, you know, you got a beef to – pick with them and you know you got i just got to stop her from her you know she's being such a he's being this uh, if you if you use a little more dignity mm. if you if you use i messages i feel uh, i'm struggling with instead of you're this you're that you're more likely to get a good outcome you're more likely to get things to to uh, problems to be solved the same thing is true for kids Kids are more likely to be interested in what the teacher's teaching. They're more likely to be engaged if they think, this is something I can relate to. So if you read Lincoln's second inaugural and you think, well, this is a speech that took place in the 19th century and it's way past, that might feel uh, removed. But Mm. if a young person is reading it and analyzing the way the president used dignity, yeah. That young person is also thinking how they can use dignity. How does this work in my life? How does this work if I'm interested in politics with the politicians I listen to? Where are they using contempt? Where are they meeting Lincoln's mm. standard? Where are they falling short of it? Or vice versa. You know, it could be yeah. many. I'm just using that as one example. So it all of a sudden brings the content to life. You could read uh, Shakespeare or you could read To Kill a Mockingbird. And you could think, well, these are good narrative uh, li- pieces of literature. But you might also listen to Hamlet. And think, 
wonder where that mat fits mm. on the dignity index. I <laughs> yeah. wonder how Lady Macbeth scores. <laughs> Uh, and all of a sudden, it be, we hope this will help the, the content come alive yeah. in a way that it makes makes a difference in the life of the kid. Yeah, uh, it is so important, and it brings it alive, and it brings it right into the home. Uh, because if the parent is talking about that child's teacher, yep, <laughs> with a little bit <laughs> yeah. uh, less dignity a or a little contempt, more contempt, yeah. Yeah. everything changes. All right, well, we're going to continue to think again about what we think we know with Tim Shriver and Natalie Gochner. Don't go anywhere. The conversation is just warming up. We'll be right back. Think again on Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson. Hey, everyone. It's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for less. And for a limited time, new customers receive their second month free when they sign up and use promo code MONTHFREE by May 31st. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up and call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Taxes, fees, and other third-party charges will apply. See website for additional details. Every business faces challenges, but complicated, expensive, and uncertain shipping shouldn't be one of them. With USPS Ground Advantage from the United States Postal Service, you can avoid all the noise. No more unexpected surcharges, hidden fees, or complex rate structures. It's just easy, cost-effective, and dependable shipping. Tune your business's frequency to success and turn shipping to your advantage. Learn how at usps.com slash advantage. USPS Ground Advantage. Simple, affordable, reliable. Ready to name an NHL team? This deal makes too much sense, and an announcement could come by the end of the season. Jazz owner Ryan Smith is warming up the home crowd with possible names for a hockey franchise. What's the future of the downtown? Hockey in Salt Lake City and Utah sports generally. Listen this week to KSL News Radio. Are you stressing about your IRS tax problems? Have you received notices from the IRS threatening to garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, or seize your property? You need an ally. Allies Tax Relief has tax attorneys and enrolled agents that are ready to fight for you. They have saved millions for taxpayers just like you. Allies Tax Relief can help put a stop to IRS collections and, most importantly, negotiate your tax debt. Here's Brenda, a happy client of Allies Tax Relief. I owed the IRS around $57,000, and they're about to start garnishing my paychecks. I heard a commercial on the radio about Allies Tax Relief, so I thought I'd give them a call. After a day, they were able to at least stop the garnishments, and after a few months of negotiations, I walked away owing the IRS only $301. If you owe the IRS, call Allies Tax Relief right now for your free consultation. Call 800-230-5174. 800-230-5174. That's 800-230-5174. 5174. Hey, have you saved more than $200,000 in an IRA or 401k? You may not realize it now, but you've got a big problem on your hands. And that problem is taxes. Because if you don't take advantage of some tax planning strategies now, Uncle Sam could take a big chunk of your hard earned retirement savings. Learn how you could reduce the taxes on your IRA and 401k with a free retirement tax savings analysis. It's from Boss Retirement Solutions. If you've saved more than $200,000, schedule your free tax strategy session now by calling 801-896-9622. Discover the tax planning strategies that could dramatically reduce your taxes in retirement. Call 801-896-9622. That's 801-896-9622. Advisory services offered through Boss Retirement Advisors, an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Insurance products and services offered through Boss Retirement Solutions. Does your business struggle with ISO, SOC 2, HIPAA, CMMC, NIST, or other compliance? Register now for the WebCheckSecurity.com Cyber Summit. That's WebCheckSecurity.com. Hear elevated conversation on crucial issues. Boyd Matheson on Inside Sources. Welcome back to Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. It's great to be with you today. As always, I am Boyd Matheson. If you're just joining us, uh, we're having a crucial conversation with our friend Tim Schreiber from the Dignity Index, along with Natalie Gochner from the Kim C. Gardner Institute up at the University of Utah. And as we've been talking about dignity, uh, sometimes we just equate that to politics and, and civil society and civic speech. Uh, and it's so much more than that. I love what's going on and what happened today in terms of 
young people and getting them engaged in the process. Now we're going to go global. Mm. Uh, it's a, been a big week for Utah when it comes to the Olympics. We've got the IOC in town. We've got the ambassador from Ukraine in town. We have Tim Shriver in town. Uh, and, uh, Good company, Tim. <laughs> yeah. And Natalie Gochner has been uh, navigating and facilitating all kinds of crucial conversations around this. We were just talking during the break uh, about this whole idea of if you want to host the Olympics, you got to create space. And dignity is a pretty good and important space to invite the world to come into. Natalie? Yeah, I was on Main Street, Salt Lake City today at the Eccles Theater, and all of a sudden I, I, I saw these people walk by, and I was like, good heavens, they're here. It was the IOC. They, they just told themselves differently. They <laughs> yeah. dress differently, and, you know, there's someone from China, and there's someone from, you know, South America, and, you know, it's just an incredible uh, group of people. You know, we are the preferred choice for 2034. Mm. It's not done yet, yeah. but we're the preferred choice. And, and you could make a reasonable argument that one of the big things that we signal to the IOC is that people are welcome here. Mm. We might disagree, but if you come to Utah, you'll be treated with dignity. You'll be welcome here. And that's the beauty of the Olympic movement, the joy of mm. sport, the joy of competition. It brings people together. They're not going to go to places where there's a lot of contempt. Yeah. They're going to go to places that are you know, treat you with dignity. Yeah, I think it's been so interesting listening to some of the IOC members just over the last 24 hours. And, and so many of the comments are around that spirit of volunteerism, that mm -hmm. civil society component, the fact that we have people who speak so many different languages that live and, and really value the different cultures from around the world. How has that been playing into some of these uh, conversations that you've been facilitating, Natalie? I think, Boyd, they see Salt Lake City as a place that still prevents problems mm. and still solves problems. Mm. And at the heart of that is our ability to get along, mm -hmm. you know, to have networks of trust. And I think, Tim, wouldn't you agree that you can't establish networks of trust if you don't recognize the basic dignity in the people you're working with? Yeah, you have to, you have to do that. And I think another thing <clears throat> that I've noticed um, is that when, when I hear people here talk about challenges that have come down the pike, mm -hmm. I heard uh, my colleague Tammy Pfeiffer talk today about Gail Miller, mm -hmm. when there were challenges uh, at the arena here, and there was <clears throat> a sense in which there had been some uh, hateful language used. Uh, the leader of the team and a pillar of this community stood up and said, no more. We don't tolerate. We, that's not the way we roll around here. Yeah. It, it, there's no place that doesn't have some contempt. There's none of us that don't have some contempt. In, but the question is, are there people who will stand up to it? Right. And are there people who will be the first adopters of an alternative? Are, are each of us, when we're in a position where we hear ridicule and dehumanization and hatred, toward a political figure, toward a social figure, a religious figure. Are we going to stand up? Uh, the prophet of this church last year, Russell, he spoke about the importance of treating people with dignity when we disagree as a pillar of the faith that, mm. so, that is so commonly held in this part of the country. Um, these are people who are not just looking at the problem, but are standing up to it. Yeah. And I think that's another very important indicator. And that's kind of what we need now. What we're trying to do with the index is sort of awaken people to the fact you can do better. Yeah, You don't have to buy in to the culture of ridicule, ridicule and dehumanization. You mm. can do better. Uh, you can find political figures who can inspire you, religious figures, business figures, academic figures who can inspire sports leaders. Follow them. And when your turn comes and when you hear it and when you see it, and when you sense it in others, stand up and say, that's not me. Yeah. That's not us. That's not the way I roll. Yeah. Uh, I think that's an important indicate, uh, uh, feature mm -hmm. of the leadership, at least that, as I've come to see and admire it here in, in Salt Lake City and in Utah. Yeah, I, I think it's so vital. It's, uh, it's one thing to, to be passive. Uh, I, I think it's always the difference between being a, a peacekeeper, uh, which we often talk about after a war, and it's just kind of maintaining as opposed to being a peacemaker yeah. uh, and leaning into all of these opportunities. And, and I think that's the area, and I think what the index is really striving to do is to provide those tools and that awareness so we can, with confidence, yeah. stand up, speak out, say, hey, that's not how we do it around here. I think that's a very different kind of approach uh, than either, uh, I always say it's either the, the finger pointing the shoulder shrugging, the finger wagging even, uh, and just doing it different yeah. and showing that, hey, we can have a different conversation. Yeah. 
And recognizing our own responsibility. I, I was uh, at a meeting a couple weeks ago, and a woman said, well, look, I don't, you, you want me to p- treat people with dignity, but I hate hateful people. <laughs> and it, it was almost, you know, she just didn't hear that she had become hateful mm. as a way of opposing hate. Wow. She just didn't hear it. That's a wow moment. <laughs> it's a wow moment, and it's all of a sudden, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute. And... But we all, but th- this is what I'm finding everywhere. I'm finding myself, you know, like I I just can't they are those people. And then I think to myself, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's not those people. Let me speak about the issues. Let me speak about the challenge. Let me not demean and humiliate mm. people as a way of advancing my yeah. own I- agenda. So, we're all a little bit trapped in the idea that it's become normal to treat people with ridicule. I mean, that's the shock here. It's not the, human beings have always had <laughs> conflicts. But now for some reason we've gotten to a point where it is now normal and accepted to treat people with contempt and dehumanization. That's what we've got to reverse. And that's why when you have the IOC in town and you have the ambassador from the Ukraine in town and you have scholars, people coming from all over the world, it's an indication mm-hmm. that they're coming here in part because they see here yeah. a kind of a respect for human dignity that they want to buy into. They want to join with. They want to work with. I mean, that's, frankly, that's uh, um, what I've been so blessed to be a part of, and I feel like it's uh, it's something that's just just getting started. People might be listening <laughs> thinking, oh, you know, I you can't believe the guy I listened to yesterday, or, you know, uh, that's outrageous. He's you know, a Yankees what? fan of yeah, all Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or, you know, what I saw last night on Fox or on MSNBC, the outrage. The, these people are horrible. You may be thinking that that's normal here, but it's starting to change. Yeah, and it is. I think uh, I think we're going to make a difference. Yeah, and it often does start with those young people. I love we're getting it all the way down to the the school uh, K through twelve age. Uh, Natalie, you've seen this a lot in terms of what's on campus. I had a fascinating conversation with Mark Roosevelt uh, from uh, St. John's College. Uh, liberal arts college in Santa Fe, New Mexico and Annapolis, uh, where they don't have professors. They just have tutors and conversations. But I asked him, I said, okay, four-year college degree, what is what is it? What is the essence? What do you hope each student walks away from this university, this college from? And he said, humility. Mm, yeah. Humility. Because you know, I think that's the beginning of recognizing yeah. dignity. But how are you seeing that on oh, campus? I think, I mean, our president says we're, we're, we don't teach people, we inspire people. Mm. And if, if everyone leaves our, you know, universities feeling inspired about the world, curious about the world, yeah. ready to go, you know, deliver, share their talent, their human yeah. potential with the world, that's what we need to do. Yeah. And I'm so heartened to hear Tim Shriver talk about what he sees here in Utah, because this is my hometown. Yeah. That's what I see here, too. Yeah. No question. Uh, real quick, Natalie, before uh, we step uh, onto one last comment from uh, Tim before we go, uh, passing of, of Ted Wilson, former mm-hmm. mayor, someone who understood the political process, uh, someone who worked with both sides of the aisle, someone who understood what it meant to be a community, passed away today. Uh, give us just a real quick reflection uh, on Ted Wilson. You know, quite a political uh, bio, a mayor of Salt Lake, candidate for governor. Uh, ran the Hinckley Institute of Politics, University of Utah for many years. Of course, a political family. Jenny Wilson is yeah. Salt Lake County Mayor. If I had to pick a word, maybe statesman, mm. uniter, yeah, uh, lover of Utah, yeah, great man. Yeah, great, great, great. And uh, he and I were actually pen pals uh, over the last uh, eight years. Mm. And uh, some of the most important things I've learned in the last eight years uh, came from the former Democratic mayor of Salt Lake City, uh, who understood what it meant to be a statesman, to a be a Democrat, humble. really? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> we have them here, Tim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, such good things and, and such an extraordinary legacy, extraordinary family. In fact, Jason Perry from the Hinckley Institute is going to join us coming up at uh, 235. Uh, Tim, before I uh, let you go, give us one last thought. What should we be What's the therefore what today? What should we be thinking differently? What should we be doing differently today, right now? Well, you know, I, I, I'm going to go to the, the, the eclipse. You know, so many people, we have so much news about the eclipse. Some of us went all outside. We got our dark glasses on. We watched the moon, you know, slip in front of the sun. Others saw the entirety of the eclipse. I don't think any of us, even if we didn't look, could, could have imagined uh, something so... Uh, huge i mean it, it, the the size of these forces in the universe uh and i i just think um if we had a little bit more awe a little bit more wonder mm-hmm. if we held on for just another minute or two to the sight of the stars at night we might find ourselves yes a little more humble 
uh, a little recognizing that we're all small, but also recognizing that the little piece of the of the universe that we occupy is important, and treating each other with love and respect and dignity is the small gestures we make to try to bring something good into the universe. And um, our time is short. Yeah. Uh, why not use it to, to make the world a little better? Yeah, no question. Tim Shriver uh, and uh, Natalie Gochner, thanks so much for joining us today. And that cosmic perspective, we've been talking about it all week. Uh, uh, Niels, uh, Neil uh, Tyson deGrasse uh, talked about this cosmic perspective, and he actually used the same word, humility. The mm-hmm. cosmic perspective is humble. And when you recognize your own space in the universe, uh, yelling at somebody over the Internet uh, about a political issue uh, is not a good use of time uh, or perspective. And so getting to that kind of conversation is really all the difference. Uh, Thanks to both of you for elevating the conversation today to continue to drive the Dignity Index. Tim Shriver, Impact Scholar, visiting here at the University of Utah, part of the Dignity Index. And, of course, Natalie Gochner with the Kempsey Gardner Policy Institute. We're going to go ahead and step aside for some bottom-of-the-hour news. When we come back, our own Carol Makita is going to join us along with Jason Perry as we reflect on a humble statesman who knew what dignity was all about and how to leave a legacy that actually matters. We'll talk about Ted Wilson's legacy coming up next. We'll be right back. It's 2.30 at KSL News Radio. I'm Britt Johnson. KSL's top story this hour. Questioning continues this afternoon in the trial of Chad Daybell. KSL News Radio's Alexandria Bonilla reports. Ray Hermesio is a Rexburg police detective. He started the day on the stand. He was part of the team that conducted the initial welfare check requested by J.J. Vallow's grandmother back in 2019. He recounted the night the bodies were found in Chad Daybell's backyard. We had Fremont County Sheriff's Office, uh, the Madison County Fire Department, bring in two large uh, light trucks to illuminate the crime scene. Hermosillo is the first witness to take the stand. He also testified in Lori Vallow Daybell's trial, where she was sentenced to multiple life terms. Alexandria Bonilla, KSL News Radio. We will keep an ear on the trial all day. Tune into Jeff Kaplan's afternoon news for an update. Provo Airport is adding, adding a heavy hitter to their airline providers. American Airlines will be offering daily service out of Utah County. KSL News Radio's Eric Cabrera has the story. With airplanes taxiing in the background, Provo's Mayor Michelle Cafusi made it official. We proudly welcome American Airlines with year round daily service to Dallas Fort Worth and Phoenix. This collaboration is big for Provo Airport, who just hit their millionth traveler, a number SLC Airport in contrast sees in about two weeks. Mayor Kafusi sees this as another sign of major growth for Provo and the state as a whole. I always tell my team we think 30 years out because we didn't want to think of the growth. We want to get ahead of it. You'll be able to fly to Dallas, Fort Worth and Phoenix from Provo starting October 7th. Reporting from Provo Airport, Eric Cabrera, KSL News Radio. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. FBI Director Christopher Wray today discussing ongoing threats the U.S. faces. There's a key law in the fight against terrorism in limbo on Capitol Hill. Here's Wray on the importance of that law. Failure to reauthorize 702 or gutting it with some new kind of warrant requirement would be dangerous and put Americans' lives at risk. Previously, House Republicans blocked the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FIFSA, from being renewed. Your money at this moment. The Dow lost two points. The S&P gained 38, and the Nasdaq up 271 points. Coming up, we have a beautiful forecast ahead. KSL weather is next. KSL News Time, 232. Here's a way to get breaking news updates anywhere you go. At the store or in a work meeting, you can get breaking news on your phone. You can quickly read it, swipe, or click for more. It's super discreet, super fast. That's the app for KSL News Radio. In the history of the world, nobody has ever said, Yay, we need a new roof. But when things aren't quite right up there, don't wait. Call IWC Roofing, the highest rated roofing contractor in Utah. IWC has been in business since 1997, and they offer the best value pricing in Utah, along with the best warranty in the business. They're one of the few Owens Corning Platinum Certified Roofers in the entire state. They have their own installers, no subcontractors crawling around on your roof, and at IWC Roofing, they'll 
send you pictures from up on the roof to show that you're getting exactly what you paid for in most cases. They'll re-roof your home in one day. They'll clean up and pressure wash your driveway. IWC roofs more homes than any other company in Utah so they can offer you a better price and right now an extra $1,500 off your new roof. Call IWC Roofing for a no-pressure quote, 801-232-5690. Call 801-232-5690 or go to IWC Roofing Utah. Utah.com. I know it's Thursday, but give me 60 seconds and I'll explain how spending $29 guarantees your air conditioner won't break down this summer, or we'll give you your money back. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and when you have Any Hour do the annual maintenance for your air conditioner, it comes with our no breakdown guarantee, 801-443-7400. Normally, we charge $129 to tune up your air conditioner, but not today. If you call today, Thursday, April 11th, and mention you heard this ad, We'll give you $100 off and tune up your air conditioner for only $29. 801-443-7400. If your AC breaks down any time this summer after we've tuned it up, we'll dispatch a technician to your home to diagnose and troubleshoot your system for free. And we'll give you back the $29 you paid for the tune-up. Where else are you going to find an offer with this little risk? You literally get your money back if your air conditioner breaks down. Call any hour services and schedule your $29 air conditioner tune-up. 801-443-7400. You can Google Any Hour Services. You can even schedule online at anyhourservices.com. When you think of Utah's homeless, who do you see? They are people with names and faces, and many are in dire circumstances. They are men and women, and sometimes children. Many are living on the street, in a car, or in a shelter. Some choose to be homeless, Most do not. Many experience the challenges of addiction or mental illness. All are vulnerable. Homelessness is a crisis, one that affects us all. Utah is building a coalition of community leaders and concerned citizens united to end the plight of homelessness. Homelessness should not mean hopelessness. Learn more at projecthumandignity.org. A message from Utah Impact Partnership. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Meese. We are looking at a crash-free, delay-free delay free drive on all the Valley freeways. That does include I-15, where you have good speeds both directions between Willard Bay and Utah Lake. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL weather, sunny skies and highs in the 70s for the next several days, including getting up to 78 tomorrow. In southern Utah, you'll be getting into the 80s for the first time this season. Right now, it's 69 degrees and sunny. I'm Britt Johnson from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Inside Sources. Inside Inside Sources. America's Voice of Reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Well, once in a while, and now and then, a truly great soul comes across the world stage. And we have had one here in the city of Salt Lake City. Former Mayor Ted Wilson. Uh, was one of those great figures who came across the stage, made a difference, had incredible impact, uh, touched individual lives as well as the community, and today has moved on. Uh, April the 11th, he passed away at the age of 84. And as always, uh, we don't just like to look at people's lives in the context of their resume or a long list of accomplishments or degrees, but by their principles. And so I've invited to join me for this segment of the show as we honor former Mayor Ted Wilson, uh, two people who understand principles better than anyone I know. Um, really grateful to have Jason Perry uh, joining us from the Hinckley Institute of Politics and Carol Makita from KSL 5 TV. Thanks to both of you for jumping on today. And Jason, let me start with you. Uh, you actually uh, sit in the position now that Ted Wilson uh, once occupied up at the Hinckley Institute of Politics. Uh, give us a first impression in terms of some of those principles uh, that made him such a, an extraordinary influence up there at the University of Utah and the Hinckley Institute. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad uh, that t- today we, we lost a true statesman 
uh, and a friend uh, in Ted Wilson. And, and what you said is right. He was the, the longest serving director of the Hinckley Institute of Politics. He was here for 18 years and he created a legacy here that what we felt for generations to come. He was with the students. He's the one that built the programs. He's the one that advocated for students to stay engaged uh, and, and for all the right reasons that he did is because he wanted them to be active. And for him, it didn't really matter what your party was either. He was one of those people that even when he disagreed, uh, he was your friend mm -hmm. or at the very least you respected him. He was that kind of individual. It was above politics, even though he had some deeply held principles he believed in. Yeah, those deeply held principles, but it was always beyond the political fray. And uh, Carol, I want to go to you. You were mentioning before we went on air, uh, just his accessibility yes. uh, and that connective uh, connect connectivity ability. We fondly referred to him in the newsroom as Mayor Ted, and he was such a people person mm. that you never thought mm. of him first as politician. Mm. And um, I remember I arrived in the newsroom in 1979. That was the zenith of his heyday as mayor. <laughs> and every once in a while, I would be sent to cover a story. I certainly was not the political reporter like Don Olson or Richard Bingham. But, you know, the charming thing, uh, the lovely thing about Ted Wilson is that he never forgot my name or anybody else's mm. who was covering a story. And he always treated us with great respect um, no matter the level of uh, coverage or questions or, or whatever. And always when I would see him out and about in the community in years later, it, it was the same kind of mm. greeting. Yeah. Um, I, I love that about him, a, a consummate mayor yeah. in, in America, I think. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and so important. I think one of the things that grounded him in all of that. And uh, Jason, I'll have you weigh in on this. I, I think he never lost something that really was the beginning of his political forays. And that's when he was chief of staff uh, to U.S. Congressman Wayne Owens. And uh, Jason, as you know, and as I know, <laughs> once a chief of staff, always a chief of staff. Uh, but he always had that staffer mentality of he wasn't looking out for who's in the room or who can I connect with in the room. It was what can I do to make the room better to elevate the conversation in the room? Well, that was absolutely the way he approached it, you know, and, and you see this from his career. You're right from Wayne Owens, but also it's one of his assignments where he, he worked even for a Republican, for Gary Herbert on environmental issues. Yeah. And it really proved your point. And I was the chief of staff at the time then. And so I, I, I got the unique opportunity just to sit down in Ted's office with him on numerous occasions when he was working with an administration that was not always in line with where he was. But he said to me, what, what you just did, uh, Boyd, is uh, I see wherever I am, I'm trying to help elevate the conversation and get to the best policy. And it, it was what, whoever the right people were to work with and whatever party they were to work with. He saw that as an opportunity and he never forgot it. And people always felt that when he when he came to a room, it was, well, how do we do the right thing? And it, sometimes it was with people who disagreed with him, sometimes with people who very much did agree with him. But it was all the same approach. Yeah, no question about that. And, Carol, uh, one of the things that I think gave him that that Mayor Ted moniker, uh, and I have to say that may be one of the highest titles anybody could get uh, when you get that, that title. But a first name only means there's a personal connection. Uh, and a lot of that came during the course of the floods uh, and his ability to bring the community together. That's right. Declaring a state of emergency, Memorial Day weekend, 1983, yeah. because City Creek overflowed and it was going to flood the city. Thousands of volunteers, including Mayor Ted, out mm. there sandbagging and creating uh, river banks for this water to flow so that it didn't seriously affect the city uh it was remarkable international coverage yeah and um it it was brilliant and the leadership was there uh there was such a thing called city gate in which we had to reconform uh a five-man city council to seven person and mayor ted had to oversee that and that was that was difficult and um the other uh kinds of things that he had to do he was very forward thinking and hoping that we might get the olympics in 1980 and it went right. to lake class uh, so he would think big yeah and that kind of big thinking mm. was the forerunner for the successes that we see today i think oh i think that's such an important connection point because we often just think 2002 and that was it but there was so much 
hard work and heavy lifting uh, done by Mayor Ted Wilson and so many others uh, that was way 20 years ahead of that. Right. Uh, that is so important. Uh, I was mentioning in the last segment, Jason, uh, that uh, that Mayor Wilson and I uh, were sort of uh, email pen pals uh, for about eight years when I was uh, starting when I was at the uh, Deseret News. And we would go back and forth on all of these principles and, and just his ability to see past uh, just the, the state of the day and the fights of the day. Uh, really that statesman's view. We, we always say that when uh, the sun is out and the breeze is light and the sea is calm, every ship has a great captain. Uh, but when the, the winds are rough and the, the, sur- the you know, surf is, is high, uh, that's when you find out who is a captain and which ships have a captain. And I think Ted Wilson navigated some of those difficult waters and like many truly great leaders, uh, had lessons in loss uh, and in defeat where he actually showed the true greatness. So that, that's true. I, the, the tr- true wisdom came through a lot of difficult experiences. And, and that's why I, I had a similar exper- you know, relationship with him is that, that you did, Boyd, where it'd be very common for me to call him and ask him about a particular issue or a topic. And because of his experiment, ex- experiences and because of the way he approached things, it was just a deep level of understanding that is beyond, beyond kind of the superficial. And that's what was helpful to me is what's really happening here. And you look through his career and every single one of those things, the triumphs, the, the defeats, helped hone uh, the, his skills and gave him a, a, a depth of insight that you don't find very often in politics. Uh, no question about that. And Carol, just a, a final thought from you. Uh, give us one of those principles, again, something that, that stands out as you uh, look back on an extraordinary life and legacy today. Well, as Jason said, you know, he was a politician who did a hope for higher office, shall we say, then, and, and that did not happen for him. But what I loved about Ted Wilson was that he lived the idea of the eternal optimist Mm. and everything ultimately was don't worry about the small things we're going to look at the big picture and what a a face of a smile on a face always when he greeted you and uh, as he greeted everyone I love that about him. The eternal optimist is what I would say. Yes. Uh, no question. And Jason, why don't you give us one uh, one final thought as uh, you reflect on someone, again, who occupied uh, your seat up there at the Hinckley Institute of Politics and uh, who left some mighty big shoes to fill. Well, he did, and we're all still trying to, to do that. But, but one of the things I, I would say was uh, he, he inspired students, and the public to become engaged. Civic engagement was a hallmark of what he did here at the Hinckley Institute. The programs he developed were aimed to do that as well. He was one that firmly believed that you can make a change if you would get involved. Uh, I love that. And I loved his focus on the young people uh, and that engagement and showing them uh, that America was an extraordinary place, uh, that the future was ours to have, and that if we each do our part to elevate to engage, to lift, uh, that we can actually make a difference. And uh, I've been thinking today uh, something that goes back to William George Jordan. He wrote this in 1902, and I can't think of a better or more applicable uh, application to this than to former Mayor Ted Wilson, who passed away today. And William George Jordan, Jordan wrote this, When nature decides on any man as a reformer, she whispers to him his great message, She places in his hand the staff of courage. She wraps around him the robes of patience and self-reliance and starts him on his way. Then, in order that he may have strength to live through it all, she mercifully calls him back for a moment and makes him an optimist. That is Ted Wilson. Jason Perry from the Hinckley Institute of Politics, Carol Makita, KSL 5 TV. Thank you both for helping us remember and get to the principles, the heart, The essence of the essence of former Mayor Ted Wilson. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. We'll step aside for one last commercial break. We'll come back with some final thoughts on Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. We'll be right back. Want to keep your gas powered engines running like new? Stable's proprietary formulas are proven by third party testing to outperform the competition in keeping fuel fresh preventing corrosion, and cleaning the entire fuel system. With Stable, you can have confidence you are doing the right thing for your engine's long-term health. Just pour into your gas can or fuel tank, 
Then top off with fresh fuel. At every fill up or when you store, start with Stable. Available where fuel additives are sold. At Progressive, we know money can't buy you happiness, but money did help you buy an RV, which means an excuse from working Saturday with your insufferable coworker, Dave. So money is helping you listen to birds chirp instead of Dave chirping about how his toddler is fluent in three languages. And it's also why you'll be smelling pine trees in the air, not Dave's tuna melt reheating in a microwave. So save money by bundling your RV or boat insurance with home or auto from Progressive and buy more happiness or something close to it. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. A fiduciary has the regulatory obligation to put your best interest first. Trajan Wealth is a financial fiduciary for your investments. With Trajan Wealth, the more you make, the more we make. Our interests are aligned. Most other financial advisors are brokers held to a lesser standard and are paid an upfront commission to sell you something. Call Trajan Wealth 801-899-7600. That's 801-899-7600. Advisory services offered through Trajan Wealth LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Looking for a secure retirement plan without market risk? Look no further. Lyle Boss, president of Boss Financials, specializes in no-market-risk retirement strategies with guarantees of principal, guaranteed growth, and lifelong income. Join Lyle right here each Saturday and Sunday for his Safe Money radio show and call him now at 855-355-SAFE for your complimentary customized Safe Money information kit and Safe Money book. Nothing but upside here. At 855-355-SAFE. Jazz fans, secure your seats for the next NBA season by getting season tickets. Season ticket members get special perks like team store discounts, savings on in-arena concessions, and more. Be there for every moment during the 2024-25 season by calling or texting 801-355-DUNK today. 801-355-DUNK. Let's go, Jazz. Good morning. Experience a different tomorrow with Norwegian Cruise Line. Book today and get 50% off your cruise to Alaska, Europe, and beyond. Plus, everyone can enjoy their vacation with free unlimited open bar, free specialty dining, and more. Visit ncl.com, call your travel advisor, or 1-888-NCL-CRUISE. Offer ends soon. Norwegian Cruise Line, ships registry the Bahamas and USA. Restrictions apply. The rest of my life gonna start today. Transform your old, outdated kitchen with Half Price Granite. For a limited time, Half Price Granite is offering special pricing starting at $25 per square foot installed. That's lower than most big box stores. These prices are some of the lowest around. Granite, quartz, marble, and quartzite all starting at $25 per square foot installed. Call 801-486-1700 or visit halfpricegranite.com. Half Price Granite, affordable luxury. It's gonna be here before you know it. Here comes the summer, like a wave of change. Soda Weight Loss wants to help you look amazing in your swimsuit and shorts. But you got to get started right now at SodaWeightLoss.com. No time? Try Soda's at-home program with all the support you need online. I didn't realize how unhealthy I was. When you start losing the weight, even that first five pounds, this enormous amount of confidence starts to build in you. You start to realize like, oh, this is possible for me. That's Lauren, and she let go of 35 pounds with Soda. With their help, I let go of 70 pounds in five months. That's because soda works. works. It's why they have more than 8,700 Google reviews and countless before and after pictures and videos of people loving their results. Get started now at sodaweightloss.com. That's S-O-T-A weightloss.com. Sodas, say it with me. Say of the art. Any hour services can help unclog any drain in your house. Whether you have a backup, a clog, or a slow drain you want fixed, call Any Hour Services or visit anyhourservices.com. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Britt Johnson. First, a Rexburg police detective was the first witness to take the stand in the Chad Daybell trial today. Second, American Airlines will be offering daily service out of Utah County to Dallas and Phoenix. Third, FBI Director Christopher Wray today discussing ongoing threats the U.S. faces with an emphasis on terrorism. Right now it's 69 degrees and sunny in Salt Lake City. Back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Boyd Matheson divides rage from reason on Inside Sources. 
Welcome back to Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. It's great to be with you today. As always, I am Boyd Matheson. We are mourning the passing of former Salt Lake City Mayor Ted Wilson, who uh, passed away on April 11th. Uh, an extraordinary life and legacy, a true statesman uh, in every sense of that word. And I want to round out the program with just a, a couple of additional thoughts and some principles. Uh, I always think it's important that when we talk about people, we don't just talk about their resume. Uh, now, Ted Wilson had an extraordinary resume, uh, a long list of accomplishments uh, and things that should be celebrated. But I want to get to the principles that should be emulated uh, because he was a true statesman and he understood the, the power of of a positive outlook and perspective. Uh, He always saw the sunny side of things, not in a Pollyanna kind of way, but in a possibility kind of way, because he recognized and understood the goodness, the dignity, and even the divinity in others. That when we set aside the politics of it all, the positioning and posturing of it all, that we can actually get to things that add up, that make a difference. And that's why we can celebrate the legacy of former Salt Lake City Mayor Ted Wilson uh, at his passing. Uh, As most of you know, I am absolutely horrific at math. Uh, I always told my children once they got past third grade, they were on their own uh, when it came to math issues and homework. Uh, I sort of have my own uh, Mathsonian math method. Uh, Mostly I like very small numbers, very little numbers that can be added up, Uh, but not just in the one plus one equals two kind of way. So my math Uh, incorporate something that I think Mayor Ted Wilson lived, and that is the fact that some things count more than others, that people count uh, most of all. And most of all, in my little Mathesonian math method, (laughs) there's a, a basic principle, and it's when you actually count the seemingly insignificant things individuals can do, there's a multiplier effect that produces magical and I think even miraculous results. Uh, Benjamin Franklin included uh, a version of this in a proverb that he had in Poor Richard's Almanac in 1758. Uh, You may recall it. You may have learned it uh, in grade school. Uh, For the want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For the want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For the want of a horse, the rider was lost. For the want of a rider, the battle was lost. For the want of a battle, the kingdom was lost, and all for the want of a horseshoe nail. Those little things do add up. Uh, And this little proverb is usually quoted as a negative. It's subtraction math. Uh, Failure to do something uh, can end in catastrophic, kingdom-crushing results. And I think as we look back over history, uh, we can see that particular principle play out. But I think you can also look at that same principle in the positive, that when you have little things, even the nail being done right, ultimately saves the kingdom. Individuals doing whatever they can can make all the difference. That's my kind of math. Uh, Edward Everett uh, Everett was uh, known as the politician who spoke too long at Gettysburg. You may recall that. Uh, But he also said something really important. He said, I'm only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but still I can do something. Mother Teresa put it this way, if you can't feed 100 people, then just feed one. And what we have to recognize, and I think what former Mayor Ted Wilson lived, was that there are no small parts or players in the cause of freedom, in causes in community. Every person matters. Each individual can make a difference. And I I think that matters today more than ever. So this Mathsonian math method, I think, uh, goes way beyond uh, just military battles or politics. Uh, I've seen it. I've read it. I've heard stories of people who make a difference every single day. And it's why we end the show this way every day. And I know the cynics and the skeptics regularly question, you know, what can one person do in such difficult times? Uh, Of course, I always turn to one of my favorite philosophers, Dr. Seuss, Uh, who provided the perfect response to the mental curmudgeons when he wrote, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. And so the thing we have to remember on days like today, it's the cumulative effect 
of all the good currently being sent out into the world that will make a difference, not just now, but for a long time to come. Jack Kemp uh, said it this way, the power of one man or one woman doing the right thing for the right reason at the right time is the greatest influence in our society. Uh, I believe that. I believe Ted Wilson lived that. And so we can never discount or dismiss what one person can do with one act of service, one act of kindness. Uh, One plus one may not equal two or even three or ten. It may be 10,000 or more. And it's up to each of us to do our individual part and to do it today, to not wait. We don't need a government mandate. We don't need a law. We don't need a, a, a dictate of any kind. We just need people to do things, and we can do it right across the street. We can do it within the walls of our own home. We can do it online. We can do it in our community, and that is the kind of math that really adds up, and I think it's the kind of math that Mayor Ted Wilson used uh, to be a force for good in our community for so long, and I uh, look back, as I mentioned earlier, of the emails and messages he sent me uh, just because he could. And they made all the difference for me. They changed the way I think. They changed the way I acted. They have changed the way I lived. Uh, Very grateful for the life and legacy of Mayor Ted Wilson. Passed away April 11th at the age of 84. That wraps it up for us on Inside Sources today. And as always, as you go out into the world, make sure you see something that inspires, say something that uplifts, and do something that makes a difference.